Hello and welcome to a new video on stochastic black holes approach. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. First things first, thank you for watching. Second, Happy New Year. And here we have uh, some citations. I definitely use Wikipedia, um, various uh, entries there. There's another channel called Ivan Chris, of which has a five part series on the uh, Schwarzschild metric solution for this problem. And that's essentially uh, the approach that we're gonna take here as well. Very, very good channel. Ivan Chris, top notch, um, very cool. And so here we have uh, the last one is Hawking um, Euclidean Quantum Gravity. It's a very interesting book, it's a very old book, but I like reading uh, how things evolved. So uh, we take the classic approach by setting the energy momentum tensor equal to zero. And that requires us to solve for G mu nu, which is the metric tensor. The metric tensor is essentially the curvature of the space that you're working with. Okay, And here we have uh, in the Schwarzschild uh, solution, metric setup, whatever, um, you are going to have these normal coordinates, x, y, and z, and we're going to translate everything to spherical coordinates, radius, theta, and phi. Okay? And since we are doing this in stochastic calculus, what we're going to do is we're going to write every component uh, as a stochastic process. So S sub X, or the stochastic process of X, equals the stochastic process of the radius times the stochastic process, uh, si uh, uh, sine of the stochastic process of theta, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna say it all, it's, it's not, not useful. Okay, so now in classical uh, stochastic calculus, we have D, uh, or the distance of, of some stochastic process, so, uh, alpha equals mu, the stochastic process, d alpha. This is the Riemann integratable part, the regular calculus version, and plus some stochastic uh, uh, portion. We have sigma, which is the volatility, the stochastic process, and d with respect to the Wander process. Very, very nice. Now, if I um, square this, or if I cube this, or if I to the power of any some beta, it has some limitations. So D, um, with respect to this uh, stochastic process, raised to beta equals zero for beta greater than or equal to three, okay? And what we're also going to use is the Itto uh, doubling our formula slash Itto's lemma. And here we have it right here. Here is the uh, chain rule, so to speak, of stochastic calculus. And when we square that using uh, this formula, we get this right here. Now we're not gonna go extensively deep into the stochastic calculus and all the formulations because a lot of them are really redundant and easy to derive once you plug in these uh, components. So it's, uh, it's just a more of a formalism, okay? So classically uh, in the Schwarzschild uh, solution, we use plus, minus, 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 and then go to minus, plus, plus, plus. This is something called the Minkowski metric, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we're doing this Einstein field equation and all this math on a certain topology, particularly a stochastic metric topology. So here we have the reals, and we have this d sub i, um, where this is the the, uh, the distance function, so to speak, and d sub i is, is essentially equal to the absolute value of the difference between two general Itto processes. They need not be exactly the same Itto process, but in this case, they are. And these Itto processes are going to have, uh, you know, uh, mu and volatility. And so, uh, in this case, to simplify all calculations, we are going to assume that they are homogeneous. In other words, the, uh, the mu and the volatility more or less are the same throughout the entire manifold, at least locally. Okay, so here are all the vector components. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, take the derivative with respect to each variable, the sr, s theta, s phi, and we're going to do this entire calculation, uh, which is quite cumbersome. So we take the DDR, for example, the, the derivative with respect to R component, the radius, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get this uh, solution and we're going to dot product it, not square, but dot product. So each component is going to be uh, squared. And what we get is D S R squared, okay? So this is the stochastic process with respect to the radius squared. Sorry, the D, uh, stochastic process R squared, whatever. Okay, and then we're gonna do it for all the other ones as well. We get DD theta, we do the dot product, 
and this is what we get. I'm not going to bore you with all the stochastic calculus just because I think it's more or less really obvious because a lot of these processes, uh, since they are squared, we can immediately use this formula right here. Okay. And what we have, uh, the last one is dd5, uh, and we have, again, uh, SR, or stochastic process with respect to the radius squared, times uh, sine squared, stochastic process of phi, and then uh, D, stochastic process of phi squared. It's a lot to say. Uh, but once we uh, do this, we can put this in our Riemann metric tensor, and this is a stochastic now Riemann metric tensor, okay? Now, I'm not going to go over the deep complexities uh, and stylistic choices of this 1 minus Rs divided by Sr. It has to do a lot to do with the Christoffel symbols and um, you know, various uh, tensor calculus. It's, uh, everything's more or less linear, uh, so you actually don't have um, serious problems by just substituting Sr. Right? In fact, because it's all linear, you can just substitute Sr. It's just some basic manipulations and calculations. Okay, and so the radius uh, classically for the uh, Schwarzschild solution, R sub S equals two times the gravitational constant times mass divided by the speed of light squared. Okay, and so once we have our, um, you know, uh, metric tensor that, you know, more or less we can work with, with this radius, um, we can use uh, this integral over the D, uh, this, this area D, square root determinant g mu nu uh, d eta, okay? This is, a, this is just a surface area formula, okay? So this is going to be equal to a, and we are gonna be gunning for the surface area. Uh, I'm gonna flip the board really quick, and we're gonna get right to it. All right, very, very nice. Now we can proceed with our entropy calculation. So we have our result, and we can kind of think of this as like a triple integral since, I'm oh, sorry, uh, yeah, a triple integral, um, maybe even one more. Uh, given a component of time. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Um, but what we find is that the ones that survive are uh, more or less this right here, right? Um, because essentially along the diagonal, uh, the first two, um, the one that was here and here, when you multiply them together, uh, they kind of go to one. So it's very, very nice, uh, you know, fitting, um, so to speak. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to interpret this integral, right? Um, we need to find, we're calculating for surface area. So we say A equals the integral over the space D, uh, S of R squared, uh, sine uh, S theta, and D uh, stochastic process of the area. Now, because these are, uh, you know, coordinates in a sphere, I mean, the, the more or less, even a stochastic Lagrangian would more or less just be a linear line. So what we can do is we can say, look, SR is kind of like R, and S theta, uh, S phi is kind of like uh, phi, and S theta is kind of like theta. So we can do more or less kind of a change of variables. And when we do this, this is again, uh, you know, beautiful interpretation, pure substitution, right? Everything's substitutable. There's no extra terms or anything like that. What we get is area equals four pi R squared, um, and zero to, pi, uh, zero to do pi, uh, r squared sin uh, phi d phi. I mean, it's very, very nice. Um, there is no real underlying deep magic except for this, uh, I guess, I wouldn't say arbitrary change of variables because you know, everything lines up, it seems quite reasonable. Um, so what we can do, then do is look at something called the Bekenstein Hawking uh, you know, formulation. And the entropy equals uh, pi a, where a, a is the uh, surface area for the event horizon, um, Boltzmann constant, uh, speed of light cube divided by two times Planck's constant, gravitational constant. And all we have to do is plug in this, we get this. There is absolutely no change in the entropy of the black hole if we use uh, stochastic calculus and we're, you know, of liberty with these uh, change of variables. I mean, there's just no, you know, fundamental altercation or any, you know, clashing mathematics. Um, what we say here is that the, uh, the surface area is kind of stochastic 
and it's kind of smooth at the same time. That's a really good in interpretation. Okay, so let's look at some conclusions. Uh, do not have to assume flat non-stochastic space-time. You know, we just don't have to assume that. I mean, we've seen that the entropy holds true um, when these are more or less uh, stochastic uh, type processes, at least on average. Uh, black hole stochastic compatibility. That's the fundamental core uh, principle is that we would like a general relativity that is defined with a stochastic metric topology and in doing that we actually preserve the Schwarzschild metric uh, or the Schwarzschild solution for a black hole. So very easily uh, in a stochastic metric topology uh, black holes can exist uh, and not only do they exist but they exist with uh, more or less the same entropy, um, you know, that we have already derived, which is quite beautiful. So it's compatible with probably many models. So we call this uh, black hole compatibility. Now you might ask, uh, why on earth? <laughs> why on earth would any of this be useful? If you get the same thing in the entropy, why would you uh, use stochastic processes? Um, because stochastic processes may or may not, I mean, nothing definitive here, uh, may be a possible explanation for dark energy, since the dsx equals mu sx dx, this is the smooth Riemann integrable part, but then we also have plus volatility sx d Weiner process dx. And what we can think of as d the Weiner process x equals uh, something like dx square root. So kind of like a uh, uh, square root dimension or fractal dimension or something like that. Uh, and it's random and we've got this, you know, sigma and all sorts of stuff. Um, so we might want to investigate the volatility of the universe. And at least on the stochastic metric topology that underplays and underlines the uh, Einstein field equations. Uh, so last things last, thank you for watching. Uh, Happy New Year. I would like to dedicate this to my parents because they're wonderful people. Um, and the question remains, uh, what can we do with this entropy? This entropy calculation is beautiful. Uh, can we look at like energy values? Can we look at, you know, uh, other dark energies or dark matter? Um, there's all sorts of possibilities here that we can really uh, unpack. So hopefully you enjoy this video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe.